Hello there amazing viewers and subscribers and welcome to a brand new epic Doctor Who review for today. For this review I'm reviewing one of my personal favourite episodes from series 7. Now series 7 has got a few bad episodes in it. Not some really really bad episodes on like the mutants or the twin dilemma for classic Who. But it does have some pretty bad episodes in it. But the episode I want to talk about is called, is of course Hyde. And Hyde... I really think it's a bit of a masterpiece and I want to talk about that and really basically what I basically think about Hyde. So before I get into the actual review, I want to show you quickly how you can own this episode. So you can either own it on DVD in Series 7 Part 2 and of course this is available out on Blu-ray. Or you can actually get it in Doctor Who The Complete Series 7 either on dvd the little slim version of dvd and of course on blu-ray and also for me to have in my collection i don't just have two dvd copies of it i have the fantastic complete seventh series in this fantastic blu-ray box set with series one to four and of course i have the fantastic series seven the steelbook on blu-ray so that is how basically i have managed to watch this episode over and over again because I watch it through different formats. I've got to be in the mood if I want to put a DVD on, if I want to, or if I'm out in the car. Like, I've got a little portable DVD player, as you can see, and I normally take episodes of Doctor Who with me whenever I go out. So, talking about Hyde, really, and basically what I enjoy from the episode. So, before I do actually get into the review, I just kind of want to say why I think it is a little bit of a masterpiece. And I don't get why people don't talk about how good this episode is. Because this episode is a kind of a little horror type episode. And you know me. I love my horror episodes with Doctor Who. I love, you know, the Pyramids of Mars, the Brain of Morbius, Horror of Fang Rock. Which are fantastic episodes for horror, including Image of the Fandel. So, Hyde is actually quite on the same level to me as some of the masterpieces from season 13. Hyde is absolutely brilliant. Now, I like the guest cast. In this episode, you kind of have three guest casts. You've got the professor. You've got the w woman who kind of connects up to the machine to try and make contact with the spirit that turns out to be her great, 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 great granddaughter in the far future who end up being becoming a time traveller and ends up crashing inside a little parallel pocket universe. And of course, that parallel pocket universe is collapsing and collapsing and collapsing. So you kind of got like three support guest cam actors. And of course, you've got Matt Smith as the 11th Doctor. And of course, you've got Clara as well. Now, Clara, I really do like in this episode. I don't find her as irksome as basically like in Series 9 or a little bit of Series 8. I actually do quite like Jenna Coleman as well. Jenna Coleman is absolutely brilliant as the actress. I know it's not her fault. It's the way how Clara has been written in series 8 and 9. In this one, I actually do quite like Clara in series 7B. And I really like her and Matt Smith. So, opening up at the episode where you kind of got this haunted mansion. And of course, you've got the professor with this fantastic cyanide scientist kind of gadget machinery to try and contact the dead and of course you got this woman literally saying spirit of this house please show yourself to me and of course you get the knock on the door and who's at the door but the doctor and clara and the doctor goes who are you gonna call and you just have clara saying ghostbusters um again this is a that bit really does make me chuckle and of course we go into the title sequence now and of course you got the doctor and clara having a little bit of banter while trying to work out what's basically going on in this little household and of course, in this mansion is an alien creature that's kind of a bit tall with a big freakish head. And I will put the image on here for you. And this is the toy version. So you get two versions of this because you've got this version that's in the in the mansion, which it turns out to be a fa which it turns out to be a female. And the male is accidentally thrown into the parallel pocket universe where the future great 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 granddaughter of these two character scientists are basically are and of course she ends up going back to present day not to her present day but she ends up going back into the past minks them thanks to the doctor and clara and of course this is when matt smith has got some really great moments because i love the way how he's there holding the candles he's there literally putting the face going, i'm giving you my uh go go i mean i'm giving you my go go we go into and she's like fine <laughs> I really love the way I had the Doctor literally just carry Matt Smith as the Doctor 
he reminds me so much of Patrick Charlton's because there's something about Matt Smith's acting where it's very, very like facial in pediment a bit like where Charlton is really really great because I mean that's the one thing about Charlton because Charlton's very very more like the movement of his face and like in some of the fantastic stories and Matt Smith is a bit like Patrick Charlton because when I see Pat, Matt Smith I love Doctor kind of go I'm giving you my uh, first you know I'm giving you my first go and she's like fine I really can't imagine the second Doctor doing this to Victoria or Zoe <laughs> I absolutely love it and of course, I love the scenes where basically in this kind of atmosphere, it gives it with the whole rainy, with the rain and of course the lightning into it, which is actually quite brilliant as well. I love the fact how basically the Doctor and Clara go back to the TARDIS and the TARDIS doesn't like Clara and Clara has that feeling and the Doctor is just there saying, what's wrong? I think she's staring at me. And of course, because it's raining, she literally ends up shaking the umbrella in the tires. Because it goes, no, no, no. How do you expect to like her if you're going to do that? No, look at that. She is soaking wet. It's a health and safety manner. I really like the way how Clara knows the tires don't like her. Which is something I find a little bit funny. Because it's not often you see the tires react to a companion yet it doesn't really like. Apart from Captain Jack Hartness in Utopia and Sounds of the Drums. So that's what, what basically in Utopia where you say running through the time vortex. But I really like the way how you, it really states that the TARDIS doesn't like Clara. Because the TARDIS knows Clara is basically the impossible girl. And basically is in through most of the episode. Well, for the rest of the series has run. And then, of course, you kind of got the Doctor going to the beginning of the Earth where he's wearing the RNG spacesuit that we see the 10th Doctor and the 11th and the 12th Doctors kind of wear in their ears. And it did return in the power of the Doctor, this spacesuit. So it's kind of good to see that this spacesuit is still around around for four versions of the Doctor. I would love to see Shooty Ghetto wear the same space outfit. I really think that would be pretty cool. But then, of course, you kind of got it, the Doctor and Clara going to the Pyrrhic-Storic area. Then you got it going through history and history and history, where you kind of see the the kind of pattern of the ghost through the camera, where it's basically running. It's like it's running away from something, and that's when the Doctor ends up saying that, I need you to open the portal to go into the parallel pocket universe. And, of course, he goes to rescue the great-granddaughter. I can't remember the character's name. is. I think it's Helen. Helen's granddaughter, or the woman name's Helen, one or the other. And of course, he ends up staying trapped in the parallel pocket in the pocket universe because basically the door collapses thanks to the Metabolist Crystal and the woman being connected to it. And she's there screaming when it closes. And of course, I really like how the Matt Smith really captures the fear of the level doctor because he goes, I am the doctor and I am afraid. And it's not often you actually hear the Doctor admit he's afraid of something. So to actually have that where he goes, I am the Doctor and I am afraid. I really think the Doctor is so terrified at this point and I'm there thinking, y you know what? The Doctor admits he's afraid. He doesn't do that often. So that that was a bit made me, little, made me like, yeah, okay, that's pretty cool. The Doctor admits he's scared, but he didn't start the very first time. I mean, it has happened quite a few times in Modern Who and I think it happened quite a few times in Classic Who, specifically... Like in the mind robber and stuff. So, of course, Clara ends up going to the Tides to talk to the Tides about going to rescue the Doctor through this parallel pocket universe. And, of course, the holographic kind of uses the image tree of Clara. And she goes, I knew you was a cow. <laughs> really made me laugh. A little bit. I knew you was a cow. The Doctor is in a parallel pocket universe. If I enter that parallel pocket universe, that my heart will shut down. So the tires will basically shut down as she went into it. And of course, she goes to rescue it. And the Doctor goes, because he's being chased by the male type alien sort of creature. And he goes, well, come on there, big boy. Chase me. And he's there running. And the creature just knocks into the ground. And out comes in the air in the pocket universe is the TARDIS. And literally, he jumps on. And you've got the woman there screaming because she's reopened the portal. As the TARDIS demon terrorizes and the Doctor and Clara. But the Doctor's on the side of the TARDIS. And Clara just walks out. And they literally just do that fantastic high five. And then, literally, towards the end of the episode, the Doctor realizes it's not just a monster type story. It's actually a love story, you know. The boy and girl meet. The boy ends up in a par parallel pocket universe. So, and then, of course, he goes, ah, can I ask a favour? And, of course, they do it again, where Clara's in the TARDIS, and the TARDIS is there spinning through the pocket universe. And, of course, the Doctor goes to it, saying, I'm sorry, I understand now, and all that. Oh, come on. Come on, then, you old Romeo. She's waiting for you. And, of course, they're both jump on the tires at the end and the episode kind of ends just there but he literally goes get ready to jump and that's how the episode ends and 
again, I just really love this episode. I really find it so funny because it just reminds me so much. I mean, Pat, Matt Smith really reminds me so much of Patrick Troughton's Doctor in some of his performances. I mean, in Series 5, a little bit of Patrick Troughton. Series 7B, I see a bit of Patrick Troughton. So it's quite nice to see like echoes of other past Doctors in the current Doctor's po point of view. I mean... With the 14th Doctor, I see a little bit of the 10th, a little bit of the, a lot of the 12th Doctor in it. So it's quite nice to see other little echoes of different past Doctors into the current Doctor. And Matt Smith was the current Doctor at the time. So at this point, I actually do see a lot of the second Doctor in Matt Smith's performance, which is why I really do like Matt Smith's Doctor. Not as much as Capaldi, because Capaldi, I see a lot of Pertwee and a lot of Baker in his performances. But uh, Trouton, I just see a lot of him in Matt Smith's Doctor. The episode itself, I think it's a fantastic and I really think it should be a masterpiece. It's not nothing to do with the whole serious arc with like the impossible girl with Clara. It's literally like a standalone episode and that's what it is. It's a 45 minute standalone episode out of the rest of the series and I actually quite enjoy it. And, and this one, I think it's very, very much over liked, um, not over liked, over not liked because I don't really see many fans out there talking about this episode, what they basically think about it. And I'm one of those because it's one episode I thought I never would really go back to revisit because I actually did like it when it was broadcast and I have watched it quite a few times since 2013. But the episode itself, brilliant. I absolutely love it. It's a fantastic horror type. It's a little fantastic horror slash Romeo and Juliet sort of story going on, but mainly more horror fighting and stuff, which is actually quite brilliant. So let me know in the comments, what do you think of Hyde? And of course, let me know in the comments, you know, if you love the episode, if you don't love the episode. And of course, before I go, it's time for me to do my rating of the episode. So what do I rate Hyde? Well, Hyde is definitely a big 10 out of 10. And of course, I have to give it an A+, plus because again, this episode, it's very fantastic. It does... Remind me so much of the Village Hinchcliffe era with the whole horror sort of setting. I love the elements of time travel between the Doctor and Clara where they have to go to find out what's going on. I love the elements of the Pocket Universe. I love the two alien creatures, which I don't think actually ever gets name dropped. So I don't know what alien species they are, so I'm just going to call them the two aliens, the female and male alien creatures so i do quite enjoy the episode i absolutely love it so let me know in the comments what do you think of this episode is it one that you enjoy is it one you don't enjoy and of course if you want to watch this episode you can either get it in series 7 part 2 on dvd and blu-ray in the complete series 7 dvd and blu-ray or you can get it as part of doctor who the complete seventh one to series series one to series seven box set or you can try and get the steel book so let me know what you think of this episode let me know thank you for watching please do like subscribe and share and join me for my awesome Doctor Who content and have a cracking day, the amazing viewers and subscribers.